He was reared in a small Mennonite town in Kansas, but at age 19, David A.R. White moved to L.A. to begin what is now a successful career as an actor and producer of such films as God's Not Dead. He joins me today with the backstory on his latest project. Welcome to The Harvest Show, David. Thanks so much for having me. I appreciate it. David, I know you grew up in a Mennonite community, but at what point did you realize your call to go into the entertainment industry? Well, you know, I, I remember sitting on a tractor in the middle of a wheat field, and uh, <laughs> and at an early age, I, around 14 years old, I, I, I had this dream inside of me that I couldn't I couldn't get rid of, and it was ultimately to go into the entertainment industry and to be an actor, and and um, and I asked my parents originally. And my dad was was born in '36, and so and, and being growing up in, as a Mennonite, my father said, "Well, you don't know how to sing and you don't know how to dance, so I don't know how you could be an actor." And uh, and so I grew up conservative, but I ended up going to Moody Bible Institute for a year in Chicago, and then had my second time to ask my father four years later to say, "Dad, I want to leave Bible school and I want to go to Hollywood." And um, and so I did, even though my family had all gone, graduated, and met their significant others there. So what can people expect to learn about discovering their God-given dream by reading your new project, Between Heaven and Hollywood? Yeah. You know, people have been asking me for, to write a book for a little while, and, and I, I didn't want to just tell. I mean, my story is full of just ridiculous things, you know, obviously coming from a Mennonite and, and uh, seeing one movie in the theater the first 18 years of, of, of my life. Um, I'm like the last person probably who should have gone into the entertainment industry. But uh, I believe that if you have a God-given dream, something that's inside of you, how do you take that dream uh, from inside of you and put that writing on the wall? How do you live out your passion in an actual day-to-day -day world? And I think that's so important. And so often as, as parents, we like to, you know, as kids, you have these huge dreams inside of you and you want to go after them. And, and by the time that we reach adulthood, we've chopped those dreams down to very manageable proportions, ultimately, so we don't get disappointed. And then we, as parents, we do the same thing to our kids. And so I just wanted to, to focus in on how do you know if that dream is, is something you're supposed to chase and go after? Okay, so I've seen God's Not Dead 1 and 2. And do you believe, I mean, we see your success on the big screen. But looking back, what did you learn from some of the uncertain times in your career? I actually find that... that in the, uh, I had I had a great run. Obviously, when I when I moved to Hollywood, I ended up in a on a hit television show called Evening Shade with Burt Reynolds six months after I landed here, and uh, and then had a good run on movies and television and commercials and did all that stuff. And it wasn't until my late twenties that I started to dry my my career started to dry up. And for me, it was like, Lord, why in the world would you let me taste my dream if you're only going to just take it away from me? And uh, and I went through a lot of hard ups ups and downs and everything like that. But I think it's it's instead of uh, if we could just realize that in the midst of our hardship, uh, it's oftentimes when you're doing the things that you don't want to do are are the times when you think most and you start to dream about the things that you really want to do. And so take those times if you're in one right now, be encouraged because. It's, it's not over by any means. God has a special plan and a purpose for each and every one of our lives. Romans 12 talks about we all have different gifts according to the measure given to each and every one of us. So you are unique and chase that. And you'll be surprised as I was to see what God, once you let go of what you really want for yourself and you start to realize what God is calling you to do, that you'll be amazed to see what he does. You also write about, you, you know, wandering from your Christian faith. How did you find your way back? Well, it, you know, I think Paul talks about it in, in the Bible. He says, you know, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And there's no doubt about it that I, I went through my own desert times when um, uh, things weren't going uh, the way that I thought they should be going. Um, and in the midst of hardships, you know, whether you lose your job, whether you, your spouse leaves you, whether, you know, there's a death in your family, there's all kinds of hardships and struggles that, that happen to us. But I always say that, you know, there's no one too common to too ignorant, too uneducated, too poor, that it cannot be used by God to achieve your and his dream that he's calling you to do. Okay, so this is my next question because I, I hear a lot of this oftentimes from people who fail to realize their dreams. Is there a window of opportunity? Will God sometimes close that window if we don't pursue what he has placed in us? I think, uh, you know, I... I Every time, every morning, I take my kids to school, and we run, we run 
Bible verses because I believe that, you know, and I'm so thankful that I was able to grow up with a strong foundation. Even though I grew up in a really conservative household, my father was a Mennonite pastor, you know, a lot of things that maybe I, I um, uh, was harder for me growing up in, in some ways. But, also, but ultimately, when your life is built on that foundation, um, you know, Romans 8, 28 talks about, we, uh, it says, God, what does it say? It's <laughs> Romans 8, 28, God causes all well, things thanks. to work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose and those who love God. That, that even in the midst of your hardship, even in the midst of, if you feel like, you know what, you've missed your time because of whatever, I think God uses those broken, God can use the brokenness and whatever that we go through to bring him glory ultimately, but also to bring life and and accomplishment, and it, you'll be amazed to see what he will do with your lives. So it's never too late. In the words of the great Leslie Nielsen, I, 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 uh, if you're if you're an airplane fan <laughs> or a Naked Gun <laughs> fan, I met Leslie Nielsen the first day that I moved to Los Angeles in a bank, and I said, "What is the secret of your success?" And he says, "Perseverance, kid. Never give up. Never give up." And there's something so wise to that. Okay, that brings me to my next question. What is the someday myth that you write about? Well, I, I think, you know, um, it's certainly not rocket science, but I, I so often we're, there's so much fear, there's so much self-doubt that we're riddled with in our lives when, the, the, when those hardship, you know, times come, when we don't achieve something, when we let ourselves down, uh, and we start to say, well, someday I'll do this or someday I'll do that. If you look in your calendar, you will never find someday. Someday doesn't exist. And so I think it's so important, and, we, and we, I write about this in the book, is that it's so important to start right where you're at today and start moving forward and start believing in your God-given dream. Well, those certainly are some words of wisdom that we can live by. Thank you so much for joining me here today, David. Hey, thanks for having me. Between Heaven and Hollywood, chasing your God-given dream. You heard it. To connect with David, go to davidarwhite.com for a link to Between Heaven and Hollywood or go to harvest-tv.com for more information. We'll be right back.